land overflowed with abundant life and vitality. And I knew with certainty then that the world I had left behind was nothing more than the corpse of Nazgoth, a lifeless husk bled dry by the corruption of Cain's parasitic empire. This was the fragile world Cain sacrificed to preserve his own petty life and ambition, heedless of the profound cost. The sight only deepened my resolve. I sensed that the pillars lay to the northwest. If Cain truly waited to confront me there, I would not disappoint him. As I passed this arcane landmark, a wisp of the Reaver's energy was drawn to the ring, illuminating it. This created a beacon of sorts in the spirit world. If ever I found myself depleted in the spectral realm, and my soul tossed on the ethereal winds, these beacons would draw me back to safety and restore me. Ancient obelisks were mysteriously attuned to my spiritual essence. By simply touching the symbol, I could safely preserve an imprint of my soul, and thus create a milestone to which I could return when weary, and from which I could resume my journey. While I had only just escaped the stronghold, I sensed that in time my journey would return me full circle to this place. Infiltrating the fortress, however, would be no small feat. The balcony that had provided my escape was now well beyond my reach, leaving this massive gateway as the only means of entry. The gates were sealed, but like the time-streaming chamber I had seen earlier, their operation was undoubtedly linked to that odd crystal mounted above the entrance.
vampires had nothing in common with the deranged jackals I left behind in Cain's derelict empire, they seem to retain much of their former humanity. In this era, vampires were clearly not the uncontested predators we had been. These creatures were hunted mercilessly and oppressed. And while I still believe that vampirism was a plague and had to be wiped out, there was nothing noble or righteous in this crusade. This was simply ruthless persecution.